you have arrived. You will walk around and observe the high place if you wish. The task ahead is not simple. What do you want, Roman? Are you tired of talking to my father? My father can be so stupid sometimes. I doubt that. He wants me to prepare for his funeral. The gods tell him exactly when he will die. So he wants me to travel north to a small village and purchase a good men here for him. To mark his grave. Your gods, maybe. Our gods can occasionally be more forthcoming. And therefore, more cruel. Just like my father. Truly, I don't know. Father says it is the one place in Galleon nobody could conquer. The stone there is pure and primal. Their druid is famous throughout Gallia. Think twice before you cross a druid, Roman. They are not to be taken lightly. It matters little as I have no money. It is said the men here make her sometimes demands boars instead. But I would not know. You would. I, I would be in your debt. Just be careful. The gods are not my fathers. They just are. Take it however you want. They don't require it, but they prefer it. You don't want to anger the gods of war. You are ready. We will answer all your questions. You will kill nobody here. It is forbidden to spill blood at the high place. He will not arrive before the ritual is ready. To do so would be bad luck. Once everything is set, we will send a rider to him. He will arrive with his retinue. Dumnorix will seek to know the future, the outcome of his plan, to be precise. For that, he needs to consult Tutatis, Tyrannis, and Essus. Each god will request an offering. We shall provide two. You shall offer one sacrifice. It is up to you which god you will appeal to. We will use the high place for the purpose of deception. You will need to please the gods. It most certainly will not. You shall sacrifice a man or a woman. The great protector covers all. The offering should be drowned, preferably in blood. Tyrannus the Thunderer is ever-changing. His anger burns like the deepest of embers. The sacrifice should be burnt alive. The scream should sing of his will. Nothing. Lord Essus is a grim god who knows naught but war. The offering should be personal in nature and of great value. You seem to have a difficulty in understanding our words. You can't please Essus unless you are willing to hang yourself until you are dead. Essus will be pleased. You will be dead. And we will be surprised. It is not up to us to question the way of the gods. There is no other way. Choose another god. You will find a bowl that is big enough. You will find blood. You will also find an offering. We will see how you will end up acquiring the bowl. It will speak of your character. Tutatis will judge your selection and respond accordingly as he will judge everything. All living things have it. Just find one. 
The gods accept the lifeblood of an animal just as readily as that of a man. If you cannot find enough blood, you will return and we will take it from one of your Serwi or one of your soldiers. It should be someone worthy to be sacrificed. Someone of value. Some value, it is true, but not value enough for this purpose. And wait we shall. What do you want, Roman? Are you tired of talking to my father? If my father will not tell you, I'm sure he has a good reason. It's a deal. Dishonor the compact, and you shall suffer the wrath of Essos. That would please a lot of people, I bet. But I don't think it's the only way to please Essos. The Lord of War often demands something you cannot replace. I have once seen a warrior cut his own eye out as an offering. You'd need a special knife for that, though. Ask a chieftain. They all should possess one. Good luck. Awe Legate, what strange and impractical weapon do you want me to forge today? Hmm. Then it needs to be made of something special. Quality wood, like oak. I'm not the best woodworker, but I'll do my best. If you want a really good one, though, we can smelt some metal and make one out of iron. Last but not least, I can bind some bones together and craft a dead bowl. It'll be crude, but scary. Well, obviously from humans. About five skulls should be enough. Scouts were talking about a nice oak grove near the mountains. I'd be careful, though. These barbarians can be touchy about their trees. If there is anything I or my people can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. It's not a knife, it's a sickle. I shall not give it to you. And that's precisely because I am your friend. The price Essos demands is not one you can pay. Your keen interest in our culture warms my heart. Very well. The sickle is yours. You will need to cleanse it in spring water. A spring of Essos flows red as blood. There is one in our cave. You will need to defeat its defenders first. There is no need for that. It is their duty to defend the spring. Fight to move them out of the circle and they will give up. Or kill them if you will. Essus would naturally be pleased, for it is still a sacrifice in his honour. Back off, foreigner. This place is not for your kind. It is blessed by Essus, our god. More likely because there is iron in these rocks. You are unworthy to touch the water of Asus. Leave! We are sworn to protect the spring. To get to it, you must go through us.
Stay away, Marauders. This is sacred ground. Have you no respect? The Eid we dare to send a Roman to steal wood from our grove. Stand aside, warrior. I have met thee with Teacus. He is a venerable and wise man. He mediated a bloody dispute between two families of my clan. As you say, Druid. Shall we let these strangers fulfill their quest? I say yes. Take what you need, Roman, and bring my regards with you back to your master. Legate, what strange and impractical weapon do you want me to forge today? A fine tree this was. Let's see if I remember enough woodcraft. There you go. Watch yourself around that druid. Thank you for your help, Roman. It was unexpected, but welcome. But the people of that village have a reputation for being fierce yet strange. Well, I have no money with which to compensate you. Perhaps this will be of use to you. It is the least I can do, but also the most. Have you brought the ingredients for the ritual? How did you acquire it? A holy tree cut down to honor a god. You take a great risk, Roman. For Tutatis dislikes tree cutters. Yet oak he favors. We shall see. You are not ready. You still need to gather blood. Have you brought the ingredients for the ritual? The blood is important. Uh, a weak vessel and a cowardly choice. We will send our disciples to drain him. Now you will bring forth the sacrifice. These are innocent people who live to serve you. The same cannot be said for all of your Praetorians. I understand. Very well. Have your people bring the sacrifice here. We will prepare the ritual. We have arrived as foretold by the will of God's brother. We lay down our arms and await your judgment. Judgment is the domain of Tyrannis. He who holds the thunder. Glory is the domain of Asus. He who is of the wheel. Majesty is of Tutatis. He who protects. The thirst will be fulfilled. I, Diotiochus, Ask for guidance, for Dumnorix, my brother. And I, he who is called Dumnorix, the king of the world, 
proud chieftain of the Aidui, stand here with my head bowed but my heart strong. For I am once again with my brother, side by side. I... on our side. You should be. We are nearly done. Go, get the last one. You do this. Defeat is one thing, but being betrayed by my brother? You had better kill me. Our tribe will survive. The gods have spoken thus. Then I spit on you and your gods. I will go and talk to my people. You can count on the support of Aidui. There has been an unexpected development. Mistrust is a natural part of politics, especially when one is dealing with Romans. In this case, however, it seems I owe you an apology. Please meet me at your earliest convenience at the site of our first encounter. My scouts have uncovered a piece of information most startling. If valid, it will save both of us a considerable amount of pain. Versing Eterix, King of Kings. Mm, sounds like a trap to me. Where King Gatorix struck me as honorable, I'm inclined to trust him, despite everything.
dearest friend, today I have both good news and bad news. I shall first convey the bad news in order to temper expectations. As I have promised, and as I am a man of my word, I have tried to reason with the Germanic chieftain Katiwulkus. Unfortunately, I have failed at convincing him. He is very much not interested in standing down. An undying hatred for Romans consumes his heart. Such violent thoughts are challenging for me to understand. Nevertheless, I fear for the safety and well-being of my people. Catawulcus is convinced that if he combines his force with mine, he can defeat you. I, on the other hand, believe this is bound to bring down upon us the full wrath of Rome. Even as you are reading this message, he is on his way to discuss terms and tactics. And here I shall start conveying the good news. I believe this might be an excellent opportunity for us. We can turn the tables and quickly take him out of the equation. Of course it brings me no joy to turn on someone who's almost like a brother to me. But to preserve peace, one must purge the warmongers. Come and visit me at my camp and let us coordinate our efforts. Your ally, Ambiorix, King of the Aburunis. Hail, Legate. Before we begin, I have brought you a peace offering of sorts. Please accept this bowl. It is made from a yew anointed by druids, in tribute to a god we call Agmios. He can be likened to your Heracles. Agmios possesses the power of persuasion, which can enthrall men and control them more than strength. You strike me as someone who understands this well. I bring you some interesting news. I have found your aggressors, the mercenary tribe that's responsible for the attack on your home. An inconsequential tribe called the Spear Bearers. Point well taken. Had I known about it, I would not have had to spend so much time capturing them. It appears you were not randomly targeted. Someone hired them indeed. Someone who's not from Gallia. That would be impossible since they have, how shall one put it, expired during our interrogation. Fret not. They have confessed before meeting their deaths. It did not save them. But still, it appears the spear bearer's tribe was paid handsomely by a Roman spy. The identity of this spy is not known to me. Not yet. This means your invasion is unjust. I will see to it that this spy is caught and handed over to you. You, in return, must agree to stop your attack on my lands. Stranger things have happened. Let us catch him first. Wale legate. Until next time. Thank you for answering my summons. Catawolcus is already here. His contingent awaits you further in. Kill? I would certainly prefer not to. Given the circumstances, I believe we might be able to convince Catawolcus to lay down his arms. He is a fanatic, but he is not completely without sense. I'm sure he will understand that surrender is the right choice. Completely certain. I convinced him not to post any sentries outside, but to rely instead on my protection. You are welcome. It's for the good of my people. Of course you should not expect help without compensation. When your armies inevitably conquer Gallia, I expect to be installed as its king, answering to no one but Rome itself. I would not have it any other way. Frankly, my friend, you're the only Roman I truly trust. Now we must strike before Catty Walkers realizes that you are here. If you confront him, my warriors and I will be right behind you. He only has a few guards in his company. 
Very good. I believe Catawolcus will choose to swear fealty to Rome when his life is on the line. I'm pretty hard to kill, my friend. Don't you worry about me. Romans are here! Attack! Kill them all! You it would work. Did I not, my friend? I never doubted you. Now let us crush the Romans together. Oh. Oh. Your leader, ah. and we shall win. <laughs> my lands. I can blend right in. Get close and move as one, brethren. Teach them never to mess with Ganya again. Time to disappear. Shall we? It's all right. I'm going to live. Keep it up. We're beating them.
I am sorry. Guys, right here. They've got our way out. There's no end to them. They're gonna kill us all. One victory in your lives! Tatis invigorate you. Oh, this 
isn't over. <laughs> what a mess. All according to plan, Markelos. All right, people, let's clear out this rat-infested cave. We have no reason to rush. How does it look, Hortensius? Bad, as expected. But not unsalvageable. I don't understand why we're trying to save them. Ambiorix played him like a Pandora. As far as I'm concerned, he deserves to die. I know, but in this case, all that is needed is for us to stand idly by. You're a shrewd man, but you have no sense for politics. Leave such decisions to your betters. <laughs> Whatever, Medicus. I will ensure that the Legatus and his Praetorian Guard are transported safely back to camp, Consul. I'll prepare the horses, Consul. Find me at the cave mouth when you're ready to leave. Go fuck your mother, Roman! No one of any importance, it seems. Just one of Ambiorix's warriors. <laughs> Consul, are you ready to return to camp? It's not my job to make anything of it, Consul. All right. I'm growing tired of these games you're playing. If you want that prick dead, we can just kill him. Or at least have Corwinus cut his throat in his sleep. We're in hostile lands, surrounded by barbarians. We have a thousand ways to make it look like ghouls did it. <laughs> of course, Consul. Forgive me. Very good. Rise and shine, Legate. You are still alive. You trusted the wrong man, and you have suffered the consequences. Fret not. Hortensius is the best Medicus of the Legion. He saved all of your lives. Don't you worry about him. Ambiorix is a smart man who laid an elaborate trap for an inexperienced Legatus, and almost succeeded. He and Catawolcus played big, and lost big. Both of them are dead. What did you expect? Is your opinion of me really that low? I have told you before, the animosity between our families means nothing when we're representing Rome itself. Betraying you would be a betrayal of Rome. That level of pettiness may come to you intuitively, but it's simply beneath me. Not so fast. Rest a little until you're feeling well. I am the only reason you're still alive. Your courage is admirable, but it needs to be tempered with reason. We will be victorious, make no mistake, but only if you listen to me. Take care of him, Hortensius. And let me know when he's fit enough to lead his men again. One gets the sense these ghouls don't entirely trust us. I can't fathom what cause we've given them to be so cautious around us. Let's see what the King of Kings has written to us this time. I have good news for you. In fact, you could say I have the best news for both of us. Meet me at the usual place we conduct such meetings. We have urgent business to take care of. After this, you will have no reason to attack my people, and I shall have no reason to kill you anymore. Vercingetorix, King of Kings. I was hoping you would come over. 
Ambiorix is a man. With very few exceptions, I always expect the worst. And you? I hope you do not feel guilty. I admire that in you. How you can take your anger and make it work for you. Domine. Most friendships are about benefit. If you're lucky, the benefit will be mutual. If not, the friendship is a prelude to betrayal. Think about this, and then think about our relationship with Luoko. Have you come to drink with us? We? <laughs> you are the one who walked us into that trap. The rest of us merely followed. But it does not matter. Even knowing it was a trap, I would have done the same thing. We have weathered greater storms together. Time and time again we stake our lives and roll the knuckle bones. One day we were bound to roll the dog. And now that day has come and gone. I am only surprised that we are still alive to keep playing. Hey, Sunshine. It's your job to forge and maintain alliances. It's my job to scout ahead and gather information so that we don't blunder into our deaths. The real blame for this mistake lies with me. I'm just grateful that by some miracle we got out of there alive. I certainly hope so, because our survival this time was a once-in-a-lifetime stroke of good fortune. What do you need, my friend? Well, he is dead now, and we remain alive. My concern now is that other two-faced son of a dog, Lurko. You must have some other plan for us, but I'll be fucked if I can see it. Welcome once again, and hopefully for the last time. And I'm glad to hear that. Meet my new friend, Flavius. He's a cooperative little fellow. A bit shy at first, but surprisingly talkative given opportunity and encouragement. Help me. I'm a Roman citizen. These barbarians are torturing me. It is said one can give up an eye in exchange for wisdom. Initially, our friend Flavius was less cooperative. Now, he is wiser. He works for a man they call Umbra Magna, and it appears this person was responsible for the attack on your villa. An astute observation and reasonable assumption. After a more vigorous round of questioning, our dear friend produced an actual human name, Felix Hadrianus. Have you ever heard of this man? Yet your suspicions were not focused on him. I really don't know what kind of game you're playing here. But I'll humor you. Since you know this Hadrianus so well, it shall come as no surprise to you that he was behind the attack on your homestead. It is my understanding that this Felix Hadrianus, who is known as Umbra Magna, orchestrated the attack in Rome. The aim was to place the blame on Gallia as a whole, in order to start this war. Stop this madman! He's making it all up! Please, believe me! These barbarians are deceitful and cunning. You have to save me. We have nothing to do with the attack on your villa. Nothing. Well, because it's a barbarian. Please, look at what they did to me. Now that they're on the losing side of the war, they would do anything to make us leave. That is partly true. I do a lot of things to end this conflict. And that should make it clear I did not start it. We? Uh, I mean the Legion. Ah. That would be like your 17. That's very kind of you. But right now, your fate is what matters. According to what he revealed, Felix Hadrianus's ultimate goal is to get rid of you. I thought this might do it. It still might lead to Vitellius Lorco. Men like him always have others to do their dirty deeds. Stay away from shit and you won't ever smell like shit. Felix Hadrianus seems to be the man who deals with Lurko's shit specifically. You do seem to have a knack for making powerful enemies. 
We'll need to find out who's holding this man's leash. If this Legio 17 doesn't answer to you, I don't know whose orders they're following. I have noticed that they don't seem to be attacking your console or his men. You do seem to be merely a means to an end. Some people always find ways to prosper in chaos, no matter who wins or loses. Funny you should say that. We have intercepted a message he probably intended for your console. It was signed M. There is no telling what it means. Do you think there's a religious significance to that rune? I have reason to believe this Hadrianus used to be a holy man in Rome. Numbers often have a magical significance. Or perhaps it is merely that, a symbol to hide behind. Unfortunately not. The man's adept at hiding his tracks. It appears these people have a secret base right under our noses, in Alesia. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly where their lair is. We could, but that kind of heavy-handed solution is unlikely to work. These people are professionally slippery. True. Hence our need to attract his attention. There's a way our hunters deal with a large pack of wolves. It all starts with a juicy bait, one that is good enough to lure the wolves out. Once the younglings emerge from their lair and go after the bait, the hunters kill them all, all except one. That youngling will eventually creep back to its lair, revealing the place where their father dwells. The tracks would still be there, especially in a tiny grove like Alesia. We both are, since I think their intention is making us kill each other. I propose we sign a treaty of peace. I thought you would. We declare our intent to sign a peace treaty and invite all the chieftains to Alesia, where we will have a small feast to commemorate the occasion. As a sign of goodwill, the attendees will be unarmed. Now, whoever attacked your villa clearly desires a war between Rome and Gallia. A peace treaty would undo their efforts. To Felix Hadrianus, or whoever he's working for, this meeting will both be a threat they must stop and a perfect opportunity to assassinate us both. Please hold your questions until later. When we are dead, the Consul will assume command of your legion and easily eliminate the rest of the chieftains, who, without the presence of a king, will surely be busy fighting each other. But, of course, they will fail in their assassination attempt. Our weapons will be hidden nearby. Once the inevitable attack commences, we will fight back and chase them away, making sure at least one of them survives. My men will follow the survivors to their hiding place. The rest is up to you. Then it will kill us. Such are the ways of war. Remember the wolves. My scouts will still find their lair. It is my city. I'll have it surrounded and all the gates closed. If they try to escape, we'll catch them. I don't have any further use for him. It is up to you to decide his fate. Pray to your gods of luck, 